today we are once again hanging out with our mates from La Vagabond, Riley, Elena and the two youngsters. Um, but you may notice we are not heading out in the Salty Dingo today. So there was an incident, very long story short, and it's resulted in us not being able to take the Salty Dingo out. The guys on Patreon will know why and maybe it's a good time to join our Patreon. <laughs> We're going to need all the support we can get after, after what's happened. But Good news is we've managed to hire a boat and we're heading out there still. You wanna go on the boat, Lenny? Yeah. Not yet, mate. We're gonna launch it. It's gonna go in the water, yeah. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the in the water. go out here and drift along and see what we can find. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Oh, let's go! <laughs> you say bye-bye, Dada. Bye-bye, Dada. See you, mate. See you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> We've never dove in this area before, so we decided to jump in in about 15 to 20 meters of water and drift alongside with the flasher, hoping that that would flash and raise the curiosity of a nice fish to come in. It didn't take long and a nice Spanish mackerel swam in beneath us. But it just didn't quite present the shot. Oh, I reckon there's that one's quite quite big, eh? Okay. Yeah, there's a big fat one. That was all Riley needed to hear, and he made his dive. <laughs> they literally just hopped in the water. Oh, someone's got a fish. What is it? Big Mac. Wow, okay. Lenny, I've got the way, Bubba. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Jeez, it's huge. Wow. This is a big fish, Lenny. Yeah. Is that a corner fish? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While we're drifting through this area, we're looking for any ledges on the bottom. These ledges provide shelter for the little bait fish and of course a perfect spot for the larger fish to hide and ambush these little bait fish. But the entire food chain likes feeding and hunting on these ledges. This is just a reminder that we're not the top of it here. Mate, that was a hell of a ledge if they could mark that. Yeah. I was there? 
I heard his yell and then I, seen that, I thought it might have been that bull shark. On my descent to the next dive, I spot a really nice sized coronation trout. Now these guys are so wary and so smart, it makes them really challenging to hunt, but they're one of my favorite fish to go after. As the fish takes off back towards his cave, I do my best to act disinterested and sink down to the bottom. For a second, I think he's gonna give me a shot. This fish is once again too smart. I know my best chance at getting to him is hiding in this cave and seeing if he's curious enough to come back. But then something else catches my eye. A really nice sized green jobfish. That's not meant to happen. That's a really good, um, really good ledge if you just want to have a dive on it. You got a job fish, Jack. Oh yeah. That's oh, amazing. Oh, well, I was down on the bottom actually looking in a cave for a coronation trout. And then as I stuck my head out, this thing was like looking at me head on like that. And I was like, oh my gosh, a job fish. Ended up um, giving me a shot and pretty happy with that. Yeah, I'm keen to drift that spot again. Yeah, for sure. Then became pretty clear, we weren't the only hungry ones around here that liked hunting these ledges for a feed. And every time we did a dive that landed in a likely looking spot, there was someone else there also hunting. They're hard to get, aren't they? Oh, very, very cunning fish. Well done, mate. Oh, I was hiding down under the, I think what he said, hide yeah. down under the ledge. And I saw it, it looked bigger because I was underneath it looking up. that we needed one more prized fish to bring home to feed the family. So we reset the drift and hoped for a Spanish mackerel. Awesome. That was one of the coolest things. There was a school of maybe like 30 or 40 fish this size. It was awesome. I'll pass him up to you, mate. Tail. Now we've definitely got enough fish to take home for the family. I guess this is like a Spiro's catch and release session. We refound the school of Spanish mackerel and seeing so many fish this size was pretty amazing. It's something I'd rarely seen underwater.
That's crazy. That's so big. So big. So many meals. Now can I get a yee hee 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 we got some fish. <laughs> yee hee 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 yeah. we got some fish. <laughs> well done mate, that was so much fun. <laughs> day so we're gonna head down now we've still got a bit of light left head down now to the beach and um, have a bit of a fire cook up there fresh fish caught like that cooked up um, on the grill is just the best way to do it in my opinion so those couple of job fish we got they're gonna be perfect for it I look for the things I don't know Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know We're all in this, I stand alone These are gorgeous Show me where the ending goes How they look at you underwater when they're looking straight at you with their teeth out Honestly <laughs> don't I should be the last to know Yeah, it's a yeah, naughty it's a naughty beast, beast. I must admit, I got a newfound appreciation for the guys on board La Vega Mine and what they do and what they've been doing the past sort of eight years or so. On board today, you know, Elaine is juggling two kids and the camera gear and Riley's juggling, juggling a spear gun and, and fish coming overboard and like it's pretty full on and they still managed to um, have kind of transcended the YouTube game into full-time movies. So it was awesome to see them at work today and we definitely learnt a lot from them. Fingers crossed it's not the last collab we do. I've been hitting them up for a bit of a boat swap. I don't think it's really a fair trade, the salty dingo for La Vega one too, but hey, we'll see how we go. <laughs> Yeah. I want a sandy fork. 